Claiborne, Texas is a city that we're featuring today. We're talking affordability, we're talking lifestyle, we're talking real estate, we're talking about it all. So it's first very important to note where in the heck Cleburne, Texas even is. Cleburne is located south of Fort Worth, just outside technically of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. However, I went ahead and included it in our video series because this is a Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex channel only because I really suspect that Cleburne will soon be absorbed into the entire Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex as it's going to have the same result that Little Elm, Frisco, McKinney and Prosper had. Now to go from Cleburne to downtown Fort Worth, you're looking at about 40 minutes. To get from Cleburne to Dallas, you're looking at 55 minutes. And if you're trying to get to the airport from Cleburne, you're looking at an hour. Now that gives you an idea how long it'll take for you to get to the big cities, but now we need to apply our handy dandy, how far can I go in 30 minute test. So as you can see, within 30 minutes, you can get to a portion of Fort Worth. You can get to Mansfield. You can get to Midlothian. You can just about get to Hillsboro, you can hit up Glen Rose and you're going to be pushing it but you might get to Granbury if there's no traffic. So now that we know where in the heck Cleveland, Texas even is, I want to welcome you to the go-to real estate channel for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So if you can do us a huge favor by hitting that like button, it's going to really help out the channel. All right, so let's get back to Cleburne, Texas because this is what you came for. Cleburne is a city right outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex in Johnson County, and it has a population of about 30,000. Now, the city of Cleburne itself was formally incorporated in 1871, which makes it one of the oldest cities around Dallas-Fort Worth. Now, as far as demographics go, about 41% of Cleburne residents have a college education, 40% of the residents have children, and the average household has about 2.8 people in it. The average income is 64,000, and the average age is 36. All right, so, so far we've just been talking numbers. We've just been talking stats. However, I want to give you the authentic Cleburne. I want to share with you what actual residents are saying that are living in Cleburne right now. Now, a current resident had this to say, Cleburne is a nice place to live. Not much to do when it comes to families with younger kids. The elementary schools are okay. The middle schools are getting renovated currently, so they should be improved in the next couple of years. The high school needs a lot of work, but so far it's pretty average. Average. Overall, it's a calm place to live with little to no trouble. Another resident is saying the community is accepting and loving of everyone. There are a lot of events that go on and everyone loves going and participating in different things around town. Another resident says Cleburne, Texas has a lot to offer. There are plenty of food choices. If you want a bit of country and small town in one, Cleburne, Texas is the place to be. The schools have a great deal of awesome teachers, far enough from the big cities to not be overcome with people, but close enough that going isn't a very big deal. Another resident says Cleburne has its ups and downs. There is a wide variety of retail stores and restaurants. The people for the most part are very friendly. There's a beautiful state park and small lake for fishing, boating, and camping. The downside is there are areas of town that are not too clean. I would love to see an improvement on cleanup initiatives throughout the town with higher standards. And the last resident we'll feature today says the town is fairly quiet. It is out of the major cities, but not too far that you can't go out and do stuff. Since it is further from the bigger cities like Fort Worth or Dallas, there's not as many people. The housing is a lot cheaper compared to cities north of here. There isn't much to do in this town. Great for raising children though. Now, just so you know how I pick the reviews, I try to go down the middle. There's people that absolutely say everything is perfect with Cleburne and there are people over here on the other side that absolutely want to see the city burn. <laughs> so I try to go towards the center. So there's something that you can get from the actual reviews outside of everything is perfect or everything sucks. That's how I go about it. All right. So now let's talk about the park situation because you might be wanting to go to the park because that's the type of person that you are, or you might want to take your kids there. That's also pretty awesome. Or you might have some pets that you need to walk. So as you can see, when it comes to parks, you have options. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to highlight and feature a few of the more common parks out there that are actually rated above a 4.5 on Google. All right, so first let's check out Hewlin Park.
So now that we've looked at Hewlin Park, let's check out the Chisholm Trail Outdoor Museum, Big Bear Native American Museum. Now, when it comes to schools, I'm just going to share with you where they're located within the city. Now, it's your responsibility to do the research on if this is a school system that you want to be a part of. I'll leave some helpful resources down below, but for our purposes today, I just want to highlight all of the schools that are in Cleburne. We have Cleburne High School, Santa Fe Elementary School, Irving Elementary School, Cook Elementary School, Marty Elementary School, Cleburne Christian Academy, A.D. Wheat Middle School, Gerard Elementary School, Coleman Elementary School, Adams Elementary School, Lowell Smith Middle School, Kaufman Leadership Academy. All right, so now let's talk about one of the biggest expenses that you're going to have, which is your housing situation, real estate. What does that look like in Cleburne? The typical home value of homes in Cleburne is $251,000. This value is seasonally adjusted and only includes the middle price tier of homes. Cleburne home values have gone up 27% over the past year. Now to give you an idea of what prices have been doing over the last 10 years, you can see the average price has just continued to climb and climb and climb to where the biggest inflection happened from 2021 to 2022. All right, so, so far, I've just thrown a lot of numbers at you. What I wanna share with you right now is what those numbers actually look like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to my website and we're gonna find Kleber. Now, right off the bat, you can see that the historical price, the historical average that was actually a couple of months ago has gone up because right now what you're seeing is Kleber in Texas has about 113 properties for sale, averaging $291,000. Well, the average price in Cleburne, according to Zillow, was $251, if you recall back a couple of minutes ago. So just make note of that. What we're gonna do now though, is we're gonna look at the properties that are available today, and we're actually gonna go with that average price point of 250,000. So we are, oops, not the minimum. We are gonna go with homes that are in between these price ranges. So I'm gonna cap it off at, actually, we'll do that. So up to $250,000, all right? So you see Cleburne in its full glory. You see the city of Cleburne. And as you can see, the homes that are available, you have some towards the east side, you have some towards the central and you don't have as many here towards the bottom because they're a little bit higher price point which we'll look at here shortly so as you can see these are the properties that you can purchase and we're gonna go and feature a few of them today so let's see which ones we want to look at just clicking through and making sure that they have some professional photography so we can get a good appreciation of what's going on all right so let's see 225 200 this one looks remodeled 235 thousand dollars towards the central part of Kleber. All right, so that house is selling for $235,000. Let's continue. See if we can find some other properties that we will want to go through together. So this one for $249,000.
All right, so that house was 249,500. All right, so what we ended up doing was adjusting our search criteria. We are searching for homes from 350 to $450,000. So as you see, previously we didn't have any homes towards the south part of Cleburne, but now we do. So we're gonna go through and check these out. This one's being offered for just slightly over 367,000. Now, as you probably noticed, that brings you a different style home. So again, this one's 367,000, which is $100,000 over what the average price was from Zillow from a couple of months ago. So let's check this one out at 389,000. So hopefully with this exercise, you can visualize what type of home you can purchase from the budget that you're working with. Now, one quick note, the properties that you saw today are most likely not gonna be in the market when you're watching this video. So I'm gonna leave a link down below that stays updated with all the properties that are sold in Cleburne, or let me rephrase that, are available for sale in Cleburne. So check out the link down below if you wanna see actual properties that are for sale right now. All right, so now that we've looked at properties, we know where Cleburne is on the map we have a better sense of what to expect within Cleburne let's figure out what a mortgage payment looks like in the city of Cleburne all right so here we are in bank rate and we're gonna do some math we're gonna figure out what our mortgage payment will be like now there are some assumptions that I'm gonna need to make so just giving you a heads up on that and we'll talk through them together for our purposes today since we know that the average price that we saw from Zillow previous was 250 we know that that's probably for the type of house that you're looking for is probably a little bit on the low end. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 300000 just to get something out there. Now, you can come in here and play with the calculator. It's bankrate.com and it'll send you over to the mortgage calculator. Or if you want to go over the numbers with me personally, then just reach out. My information is down below, but let's continue. We're going to say that the home price is 300000 We're going to say that the down payment is 20%. Now, the reason we're going to go with 20% is because I do not want to do the PMI calculation. <laughs> so know that that in order to purchase a home, you do not have to have 20% down. So there's a lot of assumptions out there that you still that you need 20% down. That is not true. The reason that we're going to go with 20% here is because again, I don't want to do the PMI calculation, which is private mortgage insurance, which typically increases your interest rate right here by 0.5 to 1.5%. I know I, I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you, but let's continue. All right, so we're going to keep a 30 year loan term. And we're going to say that average interest rate right now, they have gone up. We're going to put 5%. Depending on when you're watching this video, they will have changed, of course. So just keep that in mind. Now, we're not going to worry about zip code. We're not going to worry about credit score because this is going to not going to affect us here for the calculation that we're going to do. The credit score will affect the interest rate that you can get. But for the calculation that we're looking to do, that's not going to change. I went through and I looked at the average interest, uh, the average property taxes that were coming up, and it's about 1.8% 
on average for the property taxes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply with our calculator 300,000 times 0.018. So again, all of the unexempted taxes is what I look what I looked at on the MLS for Cleburne, and it was averaging about 1.8%. So that means that on property taxes alone, we're looking at $5,400 per year. We're gonna divide that by 12 because we're gonna, we need the per month. That equates to 450 bucks per month. Homeowner's insurance, we're gonna go with 200. Insurance premiums, they're all over the board. So this is something that you're gonna need to check with your insurance person, whoever that happens to be. If you need recommendations, let me know in the comment section or just reach out. But we're gonna put homeowner's insurance, a very safe number. It's most likely for this for this pro type of property, it's gonna be actually less than $200, but we're just going to make that assumption. The PMI, we don't have to calculate it because we put 20% down. And as far as the HOA goes, Cleburne does have some HOAs, but there's a lot of city, there's a lot of homes that are not on the HO on HOA. So a fair HOA in Cleburne would be a hundred bucks or $150. So to be pretty conservative, again, we're going to go with the $150 per month of HOA, which again, there are many homes in Cleburne that do not have an HOA. So if you wanted a realistic ballpark of what your monthly payment can look like, it's a little bit over $2,000. Now, again, there, I am very conservative with the calculations that I give you. This is most likely going to be less than $2,000, but technically I just want to share with you what it can look like from a conservative perspective. Now, again, this is an estimate. We're not going to get exact because everybody's credit is different. Everybody's debt to income ratio is different. Everybody's situation is different. So depending on the taxes, dependent on the price of the home, depending on so many different variables, we're not going to be able to get exact, but we are going to be close. So now that we know what real estate looks like in Cleburne and what it actually would take for us to purchase as well, let's look at the entire picture. Let's look at affordability, the cost of living in Cleburne itself. The median home price, which we've already already seen different numbers is roughly $241,000. The median rent is 757. The average energy bill is 168. The average phone bill is 179. The average gas price is $2.74. Now quick note here, the gas has gone up drastically in the past couple of months. So as of right now, it's hovering around the $4 mark. So just as a heads up. Now when it comes to food and grocery, we're looking at $3.09 for a loaf of bread, $1.80 for a gallon of milk, $1.68 for a carton of eggs, $3.11 for a bunch of bananas, and a hamburger is going to be $3.93. And on average, a doctor's visit is going to run $108. A dentist visit, we're looking at $92. Optometrist, $101. The average prescription costs $430. And a veterinary visit, $57. Which, if we compare the cost of living in Cleburne versus the national average, overall, it's 3% less expensive to live in Cleburne. Cleburne, housing is considerably less expensive than the national average of negative 30%. Utilities is right on pair with the national average. Our groceries are going to be less expensive in Cleburne by 7%. And the transportation is going to be a little bit higher than the national average by 5%, given that you do need a vehicle to move around. Now, if you're currently thinking, hi, Mitt, this is the community that I want to be. Cleburne is exactly what I'm looking for. Then feel free to reach out. My information is linked down below. But if you're at a place where you're thinking, well, Cleburne has a lot of the things that I want, but not exactly everything that I need, then I'm going to give you two comparable cities for you to consider. One is going to be Weatherford and the other one is going to be Waxahachie. Both of those cities look very similar to Cleburne from everything that we discussed today. Now, if there's a city that we have not covered on this YouTube channel, then let us know in the comment section down below so we can feature it. And if you're looking to make money or save money in your next real estate transaction, then feel free to reach out.